It's a view to take your breath away. This eight-year-old house near Ashurst was supposed to be a peaceful retreat for Leslie Thomas and George Griffiths. But three months after purchase, their dream home had turned into a nightmare. We just had water everywhere, through the front door, um, digging all the way through the hall into the bathroom, through every window, through the roof. It was unbelievable to see what we had realistically purchased. The house sits high in the Ruahini Ranges, away from the hustle and bustle, and that suited Leslie and George after the tragic death of George's son. Being up high gave you some sense of, not understanding, but some sort of peace. And we thought that if we could have that peace all the time, that would be great. In reality, what we've got, we've got even more trauma more trauma that is soul destroying. This is one of the windiest parts of the country. New Zealand's first wind farm was built along the ridge and any home built here needs to be specially built for the elements. How about this full window? Leslie and George reckon the workmanship is not up to scratch. Great building work here. There's no paperwork to say the foundations have ever been checked or the block walls, or, or the, steel work. the steel work, or the bracing. They've installed a shower with no P-trap or S-bend in it, but when they've installed it, they've cut the beam with a chainsaw. Yet, before they purchased, the couple went to extraordinary lengths to get the house thoroughly checked. We spoke to the lawyer and he said, oh, don't worry about getting a um, builder's report, but..." We decided that we needed to get a builder's report because we wanted to be really sure of what we were purchasing. They say they checked with the Manawatu District Council as well. I actually spoke to the person that had done the um, Code of Compliance and he told us that we had nothing to worry about because the Code of Compliance was the council's 10-year guarantee. Despite reassurances from their lawyer and the council, they decided to play it safe and pay for a building inspector to come and check it out. He said, I won't bring, won't bring the plumber or the electrician because you've got a new house, you won't need to worry about that, I'll just check it for you. Um, yeah, we've since found out that we should have had a plumber and an electrician because both the plumbing and the electrics are not up to standard. Naturally, when they discovered the problems, they went back to the building inspector. His comment was, he relies on the council doing their job properly. Leslie and George then contacted the designers and were dismayed to learn that their house is quite different from the plans. Rob Partington, whose company designed the house, pointed out the lack of waterproof membrane around the front entry, smaller roof flashings and windows then specified in the consented plan. To sum up, Mr Partington stated, there is no question that the changes have caused a failure in the building's ability to meet building code requirements, primarily the change to the cladding. This is where you can see that the, um, there isn't any cavity and it's not actually plywood and that even the way that it's done is not lined up. They, they say that you have to have the grooves all in line just to make the water run out. The man who built this house was also the owner who lived there for four years before selling to Leslie and George. He's now retired and won't comment publicly, but he defended his work saying it met all the standards for a code compliance certificate and he sold it in good faith. The balcony is meant to go all the way along here. It doesn't. But take a look on how they ended it here. A few bolts. So what about the council who issued that code compliance certificate? Local Focus contacted the council and the mayor hoping they could explain the situation, but they refused to comment. According to Leslie and George, when they contacted the council, they said it's their policy not to comment and they'd have to take them to court. We just want what we purchased. We want what the plans stated. But we also want other people to know. Yes. They could be, you know, that the code of compliance is actually worth nothing. It's not worth the paper it's printed on. We wouldn't have bought this house without a code of compliance. The banks wouldn't have lent us the money if the house didn't have the code of compliance. And yet it has no value. And obviously we shouldn't, it shouldn't have passed. Leslie and George's only option seems to be a costly legal battle or a big bill to fix what was supposed to be their dream home. 
Alexander Robertson, Local Focus.